you know, what, what this type of work is capable of doing. Right. And it, it, it is not to say like, I can't tell a customer that if you buy this bag, it's going to save someone's life or it's going to change someone's life. Cause that's not true. Like one bag mm-hmm. is not going to do it. Not going to do anything. So I don't want to oversell something. I don't want to, you know, exploit the situation of these artisans for a, a marketing purpose. So it's, it's, you know, some of you are like, Oh, okay. That's not a ton of jobs or that's not a ton of hours. But when, when you think about it over, the span of, you know, many, many orders over many, many years and, and, and products. And that obviously can be impactful. Um, I mean, I think that, um, I mean, so we've, I think one of the most successful projects that I've done is I did some work in Lesotho, which is a small country in Southern Africa. And I think it's one of the only countries in the world that's completely surrounded by another. So it's just stuck huh. in the um like northeastern corner of South Africa. Okay. Um and, and because of that, it's kept them quite poor because anything they have to import everything from South Africa, you know, paying duties and taxes. Um mm-hmm. so, you know, their economic situation is not great. They have beautiful craft work. Um I went there as a buyer representative for a World Bank project. So um they have some wonderful artisans. None of them had exported before, and they didn't really understand what the international market wanted. Um, so I went to kind of help develop product, and I ended up developing a few clutches that I sold into Madewell in the U.S. Oh, okay. Oh, so okay. That was that was really exciting. Um, it was exciting for them. Not that they knew who Madewell was, but they were like, okay, we'll, we'll take, you know, a couple hundred of these, a couple hundred of oh, these. Oh, um, congratulations. Order. That's good. Yeah, thank you. I was, I was, that, that, that was something I was very proud of. And, uh, yeah. and, and I know that they were too. It was extremely challenging to get them to make it happen. Um, you know, we had to like scale up and, and train more people and spread it out over different weaving groups. But, uh, right. But yeah, that was, that was something that, you know, that was that, that was a challenge, but it worked out and it, it went really well. And what I like about that is you you are including them in the story of what happens after they make the product and who's buying it and how yeah. how much their skill is of value on in the international sure. market. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, and so I think like impact is important. It's fun to talk about it because impact really is jobs. It is. It is. Wherever you are, you know. Mm-hmm, um, exactly. In a recent interview with uh, Style Line, you said that you sh- you like people to ask where to next. And so my question for you is where and what is the next step for the future of Proud Mary? Sure. Um, about six months ago, I started to kind of get in a place where um, Proud Mary has been a very small company since I started. It's pretty much just been me and an assistant, um, an intern here and there, and then, you know, a project manager on the ground. So I knew in order to really, like, scale up, I would have to go down the road of trying to get investors. It really wasn't something that I wanted to do. And as much as I love my little brand, I also love the artisan sector in general on a larger scale. I'm just interested in um, kind of the growth and, and the development of the sector. So, um, in addition to Proud Mary, I've already I've started to do some consulting work. So I work with small artisan brands, um, small to medium artisan brands who are starting out in the sector or who are in um, are pivoting and kind of the growth stage or changing their model a bit. So that's been really really fun. Um, because I learned a lot. I've been doing this for 10 years. When I started Proud Mary, there wasn't a lot of people in the space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you so, came the way. Um, uh, <laughs> I guess I did a little bit. And now it's um, it's become something, you know, really big. It's something that consumers are really want. And they're, and they're kind of demanding, you know, fairly sourced, ethically, ethically sourced and produced products. So um, there's a lot of people that want to get into this work and you know, I've, I've learned a lot and made a lot of mistakes. So it's, um, I feel like it's been really fun to be able to share that information with people, mm-hmm. um, you know, from helping them do sourcing. Like, I mean, I think sourcing was something that everyone wants. That's the first thing people want to know. Right. I want to, can you connect me to someone in Mexico 
I want to make this, but I really try to get them to think about, okay, let's, let's slow down and go backwards a little bit. Like, why are you starting this? Are you, do you want someone to make your designs in Mexico or do you really have an affinity for a certain kind of craft or do you want to create jobs? So really understanding why they're, Mm -hmm. they're getting into this work and then building out from there. Um, But I mean, I've helped with anything from like, putting together profit and loss statements. And a lot of people like don't even know what that is. Right. And I didn't either when I started, but, um, <laughs> and in the artisan sector is it's the fair trade space is it's, it's hard. It's difficult to scale because everything is handmade. So, you know, you have to consider is a wholesale distribution model better, or do you want to sell direct to consumer um, and the different kind of risks and costs associated with, with, with each of those. So, um, yeah, like I said, you know, I, I've i learned by doing, so it's been fun to share. And, you know, the, the success of these businesses, like, is, it's we're, we're all doing this because we want to I'm help. I'm putting help in quotes. We want to help, you know, mm-hmm. marginalized people, people around the world. And not that they need our help, but it, they could use our orders. Right. Um, so just kind of like helping um, small businesses figure out how to best, do that. That's amazing. And what I like about it is that you actually did this. You're not just some consultant um, coming from a different industry that you know nothing about. That you're actually a consultant from an industry that you've worked hands on in yeah. for the past <laughs> ten years, and you know what works and what doesn't. And um, yeah. I, I think that's that makes perfect sense. And um, yeah, it's, it's coming from a place of authenticity. Yes, that's I. I I try to always, as much as possible, come from come from that place. And so, how do you go about um, securing customers? Do you, is it mostly because you've been in that world and you just know a lot of people? It's it's mostly been through word of mouth. As um, okay, I've built I've built up a pretty strong Instagram following. Okay. I mean, not it's only probably like twenty two thousand people, but they're pretty engaged. So when I first started doing the consulting, I put it out there and I got a lot of inquiries from that and um, from my mailing list and also just word of mouth. So it's kind right. of a slow grow, but I, I think I'm starting to get more and more people um, ask me to do. And, and every project is different, which is really fun. Um, it kind mm-hmm. of spans a, a, lot, a lot of different things, which I really enjoy. That's awesome. And now, how can our listeners learn more about your consulting services and how to get in touch with you? Sure. Um, well, they can go to proudmary.org, and there's a place to sign up for our mailing list. And we um, send out email blasts probably like every other week, which is about products and things that are going on. And I always have like a little blurb about our, our consulting services there. And also, you can follow us um, on Instagram at Proud Mary Global Textiles. And I post a little bit about that there and other things that we're up to. I love your Instagram. I, I my my Thank favorite you. part is the Sunday styles because you show styles Thank from around you. the world. That's really neat. <laughs> That's some fun to do. Yeah. So um, we're just going to segue into our rapid fire questions, and um, okay. this is just an, a part of our interview process to let everyone know a little bit about Harper Poe. I just love calling your whole name. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> All right. So, um, oh, I didn't ask you. Um, how did you? How did your parents come up with the name Harper Poe? My my real name is it's Mary Harper. Um, okay. It was Mary Harper was my great grandmother's name, and in the South, a lot of people use their middle names as their first name. Oh, okay. Okay. Neat. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so rapid fire. Um, one, coffee or tea? Coffee. Coffee. Um, beaches or mountains? Oh man. Both. That's a hard one, right? <laughs> I know. I, 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 I need both of them. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just like, you know, if you go to Mexico, do you want to be in San Miguel de Allende or do you want to be by the beach? <laughs> yeah, both. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> um, what's your superpower? Oh, man. Um, I think it's to get along with a lot of different kind of people. Mm, good. And your favorite city? Mexico City. Mexico City. That's on my list of places to go. Um, it is fantastic. I love it. It's amazing. 
Yeah, I hear um, it has the most museums in the world. Is that mm-hmm. true? I wow. think so. It's yeah, it, 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 it's it's a magical place. I mean, obviously, you know, the food, the museums, the people, the beautiful people, the cafes, the shopping, like you know, the Mexican culture is is just it, it's beautiful. That's exciting. Okay. <laughs> now I really want to go next year. Okay. Yeah, I go. <laughs> um, and the last one, biggest advice you can give to an entrepreneur? Um, I think it's figuring out wh- wh- figuring out your why. So understanding, you know, why you're starting this business and really doing everything from being very clear about that. And I think that, um, like all other decisions, once you're very clear and authentic with that, um, will be you know, made in the right way. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it, Harper. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. Okay. Bye.